Hi, I'm Ann Holder, CEO of Morani, and I am incredibly excited to be on the TCB 100 list. Hi, my name is Dr. Chris Brooks, and I'm a managing partner at Brown Venture Group, and I'm honored to be part of the TCB 100. Hi, I'm Jasmine Jurley, President and CEO of Allianz Life, and I'm thrilled to be recognized as one of the Twin Cities Business 100 People to Know in 2022. As the brand new president and CEO of the Ordway Center for the Performing Arts, I am humbled to be named a person to know, and I look forward to meeting all of you. I'm so excited to be part of the TCB 100. We have such a great community here. One of the biggest lessons I've learned during the pandemic has to do with change. How we work, the manner in which business is conducted, and what employees want has forever changed. And companies that listen, adapt, and incorporate progressive thinking will stay ahead of the curve. In terms of lessons learned during the pandemic, it's really the power of teamwork and a group of individuals working towards one collective goal. A lot of people say, don't bet against the Fed. What I learned in the pandemic is, don't bet against technology when a crisis is on the line. That we are all connected in many, many different ways. And we really need to anchor ourselves to the things around us that we inherently believe are good. I became a first time CEO during the pandemic. So the best lesson I learned is that even in the most challenging of times, there will always be good opportunities. It takes discipline and resilience to see through the clouds, but the future is very bright. I think during the pandemic, what we learned was to really adapt and how to pull together and how to uh, figure new things out with creativity. And I'm hoping that we continue that as we go forward. This has been an incredible year. We've all learned a lot. My advice to everyone is find work that has meaning and that matters to you, especially in tough times. There's nothing like knowing you've done your best and tried to make a big difference for people. The best lesson I learned during the pandemic, both professionally and personally, is to remain patient. People are resilient, but supply chains are fragile. And really now we have an opportunity to build a more resilient system for business going forward. The best lesson that I learned during the pandemic was that my mother was right all these years and that getting eight hours of sleep consistently every night makes you a better person. I do think what's gonna get us through today is going to be necessary for tomorrow. So I'm saying engage, explore, and execute. Patience and empathy. Everybody is afraid of something and nobody knows what the solution is. So we need to work together. And one major lesson I learned in pandemic is set boundaries, personally and professionally. One of the most important things I learned through the pandemic is the importance of flexibility and meeting people where they are coming out of COVID, that Minnesota is positioned to be recognized as the global epicenter for health, innovation, and care. Solidarity is the answer. If we take care of each other, we will take care of ourselves. A slow, intentional pivot is absolutely better than no pivot at all. Among the many lessons that I've learned during the pandemic, it's you can think that you've prepared for every possible scenario and you will find out that you were wrong. Coming out of the pandemic, 2022 is gonna be a time where we can all celebrate together again, especially with craft beer. Five words that describe my outlook for 2022, resolute, realistic optimism, moving forward. My mindset going into 2022 is around having active hope, active hope for a better future. 2022 is all about optimism and energy. We are back in the office meeting with clients in person and with our colleagues and loving it. I have a growth mindset this year. With everything opening up from COVID, uh, I think there's so much anticipation that, that there's a lot of excitement globally as well as locally. My mindset in 2022 is to get it done. Innovation is rewarded, but execution is worshipped. So I am focusing on gratitude and I am super excited for 2022. My mindset about going into 2022, I'm optimistic, enthusiastic, humbled and thankful. I feel passionate, I feel inspired, I feel motivated, but most of all, I feel hopeful. Be the papa bear, work with as many young people as I can, because if you're not cultivating the next generation, you're dooming your entire industry to fail. So work with young people in any capacity, every capacity, as many as you can touch. My advice to young people, speak up, speak often, 
Speak early. Don't wait. Don't be afraid. Feedback is a gift. It means someone cared enough to give you insight about you you might not have otherwise learned. So take the feedback and learn from it. Don't constrain yourself with artificial or arbitrary boundaries. My advice to anyone getting in business or young entrepreneurs would be to hustle, have a plan, invest early, network, find a mentor, and always say yes. Speak out, take action, and be accountable for positive change. Be patient. Success doesn't always take the path you expect. Do your best. Strive to leave things better than you found it. Help people along the way. And remember, if you think you can or you can't, you're right. The advice I always give young people is be open-minded to opportunity. There are so many coming. Seek them out and take ownership of your career. My advice for young people is that future success is always dependent on navigating obstacles. Pick one of these large societal problems that you're passionate about and let's get to work. You are the future. Be the change that you want to see in the world and we can do it together. My best career advice is something my mom said to me years ago, which is surround yourself by people that are better than you. It's the key to constant growth and makes work so much more fun and inspirational. You always want to be obsessively devoted to the happiness of others because it's not about you. It would be to aim high and keep good company. That fear of making mistakes never goes away. So don't let that deter you from doing what you want and moving forward. My career advice for young people is to remove your ego and allow yourself to be fully present in the work. Seek out great leaders. Find people that will teach you, that will coach you, and that will push you and also treat you well because life's way too short for anything less. Be brave enough to write your own narrative. At every stage of your life, people around you will write a story about you, what you're capable of, where you belong, where you're headed. Challenge those stories. Don't let them hem you in. When you face a challenge, instead of saying, I can't, adjust how or what you are doing to move forward. Believe in yourself and say yes to the opportunity. I would highlight the importance of building a network and relationships. To young lawyers who ask me for career advice, I say be humble, be open, and look for opportunities to learn. To not take life too seriously. We all need a good sense of humor to get through personal and professional life experiences. Be a student in life and of life. Education can never be taken away. But best advice without a doubt is pay attention to your energy over time. You should be in a role that feeds your soul. It doesn't drain it. Think about every single person that counted you out and use that as motivation to make sure you never let their dream for you come true. In all things, be creative, entrepreneurial, and welcoming.
The phrases I use a lot in professional settings is that we must switch our thinking from doing things for communities of color to doing things with communities of color. When you do things for, it's a project. Projects get cut. When you do things with, it's a partnership and partnerships get invested in. I use the word and a lot because I think too often in radio or in business, in team settings, we use the word or. We give people choices and ultimatums instead of being inclusive and thinking big. And, favorite word in the English language. A phrase that I often say at work um, is the income feeds my stomach, but asset feeds my mind. And it is about building capacity and increasing one's self-efficacy to spur intergenerational and community wealth. A saying I find myself saying often, people are quick to tell you the 10 reasons why something will not work. That's easy. Tell me the one reason you think it will work. One of our favorite mantras at Alaris, and one of my favorite sayings is, let's go get it. Winning is fun. Life is a gift to be shared. So I subscribe to the fail fast to succeed sooner model of, of design. And so quite often you'll hear me say something like, let's try this. And a phrase that I use often is, don't confuse being busy with being productive. So like my man Al Green always says, let's stay together. You either win or you learn, but you never lose. Oh, it's definitely the F word. That is food. One of the things I like to say is, don't be afraid of your greatness. My favorite saying is, foolish consistency are the hobgoblins of little minds. Right now, the expression I use way too much is, you're on mute. TCB 100, and guess, I'd like to add one thing. Be philanthropic, give back. It's good for the heart, it's good for the soul, it's good for blood circulation. It makes you live longer, it's a proven fact, and it's also great for your immune system. So, philanthropy, think about it. it doesn't have to be money, give back. Honored to be on the list. Cheers, everyone.